Hey everyone and welcome. I am Sailor Drew. Let's hang out and play some Sims Medieval. Not only that, but Game of Thrones Sims Medieval. Uh, so Sims Medieval was a one-off during the Sims 3 era and it is very, very different than the Sims 3 or any other type of Sims game that came out uh, as it is standalone. Um, we've had some kind of standalone Sims games in the franchise before but this one we we really haven't seen anything like it before and um you guys will be able to kind of see why so this might be a little bit jarring for those of you who have played sims but never played this or saw it they didn't get like super popular and i can kind of see why but i have always had a massive blast paint playing this game and the expansion that came out afterwards uh, but let's go ahead and jump into westeros and uh so here's the kingdom. Here's the Red Keep. <laughs> and here is our uh, King's Landing, essentially, is what it, it comes out to be. Uh, and as we go along, you'll kind of be able to discern the differences between any other Sims game that we've had in the past. It is a lot of fun, and I think that you guys will have a lot of fun playing with me. Uh, so I did some kind of hacks and those of you who are channel members will have access to me setting up the castle beforehand and any behind the scenes stuff uh, because I'm going to do like an episode zero essentially and I'll probably do this for a lot of series where I need a lot of setup and stuff like that um, but at the end of the series everyone else will get access to it uh, but I wanted to try and make like the castle kind of look like um, what it looks like in the show. A lot of what I'm basing off, you know, as far as like how the characters look and everything like that, I'm basing it off the show. So if you're a diehard book fan, don't at me. <laughs> like, Cause, um, you know, I wanted to do this as the Game of Thrones season eight, the final season's coming out. Um, obviously I'm not gonna have like all the kind of the art rated R stuff that is in the show uh, just because this is the sims uh but hopefully we will have some murder going on because our ultimate goal for this mini series is to kill king joffrey and get daenerys on the throne so uh something else to consider is that you might experience some spoilers so if you haven't seen seasons one through seven i'm sorry <laughs> Um, also, uh, so something that, uh, puts this a, a little bit differently is that, um, each of these buildings has a sim that holds a profession. And while I am going to be putting characters into these positions, it might not make complete sense. Cause you're like, why? Because for instance, um, we have a new knight that we need to place in here. Um, and then we also have a spy that we need to place in here. The spy is going to be Arya Stark. Even though she's not going to sit there and work for the king, she would never do that. <laughs> it just makes sense as to like who her character is and everything like that. And I also anticipate that even if you haven't seen Game of Thrones, you will be able to enjoy this series still anyways um because you know we're we're gonna try and run the kingdom kind of badly through our quest choices to where we pop a certain type of quest that will allow us to kill joffrey because <laughs> you can kill sims in this game uh so let's go ahead and um pull up the barracks here. I have made a couple of sims at this point in time. Um, so let's see here. I think this is my Ned Stark one. It's kind of hard to get certain um, like features, facial features and stuff like that of certain sims. So and you'll also notice that even in comparison to The Sims 3, the sims medieval graphics are a bit more more realistic while the sims 3 was more stylized and then of course sims 4 is like super stylized and cartoony so it's a bit interesting uh, but this is our Ned Stark he has uh the traits chivalrous dedicated and morose I don't know <laughs> he's just kind of like a brooder like Jon Snow is 
Uh, so let me take a look, see as far as what clothes we can put him in that might uh, fit better for how he kind of looked in the show. It, he kind of wore something similar to this. So I think this is what I'm going to go for. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and get him in here. Now we need to select a quest. And I'm going to try and do one that the, uh, that he could do. Um, so let's see here. A wild boar hunt. Oh my God. That's hilarious. So bounty hunt, wild boar, a massive wild boar has taken up residence in the nearby forest, gorging itself on wild truffles and charging at anyone foolish enough to disturb it. A bounty is offered to anyone brave enough to slay the beast and brings its tusk back as proof of their deed. Okay, so this would actually be kind of interesting because um, Robert, the king, as we saw at the beginning of the series, was slain by a wild boar for reasons that, because um, he was an exceptional hunter and tactician and everything. So there, you kind of discover like later on why he was so drunk and got just really stupid and ended up getting killed by the boar. So I think that it'll be um, like a good one to do. It kind of uh, makes sense, right? Massive wild boar has taken up reds and uh, yeah, so primary hero, it's gonna be our knight. He says, I will collect it. So here is the knight's barracks. Um, I didn't update this uh, just because um, I kind of wanted to only sit here and do the buildings that I felt like we would see the most of. Uh, but chance to battle a rap, I don't know how to say that word, a bloodthirsty boar, a bounty of 1,000 sim uh, simuls. Simoleons, simuls. <laughs> I should speak with the monarch immediately and learn where to start hunting. Okay, so we have our sim, but... Uh, the uh let's see here so we have to uh we get like these like little indicators as to where we need to go and this is what i spent most of my time on this <laughs> and joffrey there he is he's like evil and i don't know we'll have to look at his um attributes later on but yeah like he's evil and kind of like vicious and just everything that he is normally uh but yeah i spent uh, quite a long uh, a lot of time doing it and trying to make it look like the red keep. I also try to, so you see here, um, it's, you know, he is a Baratheon, even though technically he's not. Um, so the yellow and black and then the red and gold from, you know, his mother's side, the house of Lannister. I also wanted to try and because he's actually a Lannister, that's a, maybe the, a, a spoiler for some of you, but he's actually a Lannister. So I wanted to try and put in um, as much like hints of the Lannisters just having complete control over the monarchy to where you can see uh, lion's banners. Um, this is like the small council room where they have their meetings and everything. So everything in here, you know, this is position of power in here. So you see more gold and red in here than you do the, um, you know, his dad's side, you know, quote unquote, his dad, Robert Baratheon, the house of Baratheon's uh, colors. And it kind of spills out, you know, in other parts of the castle. Uh, but, you know, like in his room and stuff like that. I also put some dragon stuff in here because um, the Targaryens were the monarchs for an astounding amount of time. Uh, but I still wanted to kind of like, you know, again, have the hints that the Targaryens were the rulers up until recently and, you know, maybe hopefully they will be again. Um, you know, and it also, this is kind of like historically accurate to where, and, you know, even in the show, like, cause, uh, Robert's brother had one of the Targaryen castles and there are dragons everywhere throughout the castle. Um, this is also kind of like historically somewhat accurate, like, cause, 
Uh, King Henry VIII, whenever he got rid of his first wife, um, the artisans or carpenter, I don't know, whoever went through and removed all of her sigils from all the carvings and then uh, put his new wife stuff. But they actually missed one of her sigils. So there's like only one sigil in the entire castle where it's like, I think it's like a carved rose or something like that that they missed. So, you know, seeing stuff like this wouldn't be um, totally inaccurate. Uh, but yeah, seeing you can see like the lion's heads are over here. So red and gold again. Um, so yeah, I just, you know, I figured because her, you know, his mom is a Lannister. Uh, so apparently um, you can only get the king's name if you are born of it, not married into it. So that's why Cersei isn't Cersei Baratheon. She's Cersei Lannister. So, and Joffrey is Joffrey Baratheon. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to location. So I think he's over there like reading. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. I just kind of wanted to explain like, like how I try and look things uh, made things look also doing studying as far as like how the red keep looks in the throne room and everything i didn't really realize it but the uh the window in the back behind the iron throne and i couldn't really come up with anything spiky uh the building cheats and the building capabilities in this game are way more limited than they are in the other sims games so this is as good as it's gonna get um, he says, I wonder if I should approach Lord Joffrey directly about the bounty hunt. Perhaps it would be prudent to speak with the royal advisor, Beatrice, first and learn what I can, uh, can about this boar. Um, but yeah, as the seasons go on, like the windows and the pillars, uh, change in appearance. So when, uh, Robert was alive, like they had like these vines and stuff. Um, so, uh, things kind of get bad like more dire looking and more ominous as the seasons go on but I liked how those look and we actually had these like in the game so I was like "Ooh, yeah I want to use these um okay so oh look he's like thinking evil thoughts because he is evil you're totally going down Joffrey okay uh so Beatrice so whom should Sir Edard speak with about the boar hunt. Lord Joffrey will be pleased to have another hunter after this boar, or I should speak with royal advisor Beatrice and learn about the boar. Let's speak with the royal advisor because uh, Ned didn't really deal with Joffrey like uh, directly uh, very much in the show. Uh, so it looks like she's outside. Oh, she's like sending a quote unquote raven. <laughs> let's just say it's a raven, even though it's obviously a pigeon. So let's ask her about the boar. And I had no control over the NPCs, so it's not like I could have made the advisor like one of like the actual advisors on the small council. But let's go ahead and uh, oh, oops, go ahead and ask her about it. I think I just hit like Q to quit. So yes, this boar that killed King Robert. Let's do something about it, shall we? Another bounty hunter. That's all I need right now. More elves tromping through the castle talking about boars. None of them uh, with expertise in boar hunting anyway. Get lost. <laughs> How rude. Perhaps I should have spoken with the monarch after all. Alright, so let's, uh, let's talk to Joffrey about it. <laughs> with a laugh. So, the boar that killed your dad. Like, I think we should go after it. What do you think? Good idea? Yay, nay? Ho! Oh, another brave adventurer wishes to challenge the immeasurable boar terror. Babaskapa. <laughs> Babaskapa. One thousand simuls if you can bring me his head or tusk or anything that shows you have defeated that scoundrel. Do you accept the challenge? Yes. So... I should let the monarch know I accept the challenge to slay the boar. Accept bounty. Yes, I will take care of this and avenge my dear friend, King Robert, and your father. Off you go then. Return with my prize boar, or don't return at all. 
The other bounty hunters have set up camp in... <laughs> the evil laugh, I love it. Have set up camp at the forest. You can find them there. Okay. So... That's uh, what we have to do next in the quest. Um, so our needs... So Eddard is horrified over what he just witnessed. Okay, so I, j I apparently just saw something that I didn't agree with. Um, yeah, these are kind of like a little moodlets that give us like positive or negative, uh, you know. Uh, also, this is uh, how well we'll do at the quest. So right now it's silver. So the longer we drag the quest out, essentially, um, and then also so long as we complete all of the quest tasks in a timely manner and we don't like slouch on stuff for a long period of time, our quest ranking will continue to go up. Uh, also, every single sim has, oh, look at me, I'm getting into a fight with somebody. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> Efren is very angle, uh, angry with Eddard. <laughs> Yeah, he's not very uh, socially savvy, unfortunately, which is uh, kind of what gets him killed in in the first place. But um, so, but for every sim that has a job, like every main sim that we get to play, uh, they have daily tasks that are randomly awarded to them. If we don't complete these in the time allotted, it'll give us negative moodlets, um, especially since uh, Eddard is dedicated and chivalrous if we don't complete his tasks it will actually affect him even more so like he'll uh he'll be more bothered by it which is totally like a stark right like they're all about honor and duty and doing the right thing no matter how horrible it is um so practice military strategy with someone for 30 minutes i am in need of a clever opponent in mock battle to hone my military strategy uh, train sim for two hours so the kingdom has requested that I train to fight to to the training dummy okay so we'll have to go back into the barracks for that uh, so let's see here so let's go in there and then we'll take a look um, there are some training dummies up here so let's go ahead and practice indefinitely for at least two hours it will also kind of give us some um, points because uh, we need to level up uh, certain attributes and everything uh, so <laughs> uh, so it also kind of let us know like how much we have oh train a sim for two hours oh so I actually have to train somebody not train myself uh, but yeah it's uh, we get XP for doing certain things so as my sims level up, they'll be more likely to be able to complete tasks a lot faster. Um, they'll also be able to win duels more likely. Oh, see, there's no one to train, so it's going to be a bit hard. And I'll practice military strategy. Um, goodness. So you might like have to like call somebody over. Like, I wonder who we could call over. So... Night friendly. Is there a way to call somebody over? It doesn't really look like it, does it? Interesting. See, and I've got like all these knights everywhere and everything. I'm like, I need you guys over where I'm at so that way I can do my daily tasks. But I guess we'll just move on to the next thing. All right, so here's the entrance to the forest. And, uh, so I guess we'll kind of talk to them and see what's going on and what's what, if we can. All right. This must be the campsite. It reeks of mud and booze. These hunters must all be after the boar, too. Uh, I should speak with them and see if they have any valuable information. Okay. Does this wild boar live in the forest? I'm gonna ask this guy. What <laughs> he's like he like something about executioner. <laughs> it's not good, Ned. It's not good. Dulcish dunce. Dulcish dunce. It's a little bit of a tongue twister. 
Of course the wild beast dwells in the forest. Not that you will have any success hunting it. Bring me some beer and I'll tell you a secret. Seen the boar lately? Hick! Oh, he's drunk. <laughs> How's the boar hunt going? Oh, and he's passed out. <laughs> These lads spend their time drinking and boasting, but I have more pressing concerns. Okay. So tell the hunter a good joke. So funny, tell a joke. So I guess we're going to try and like kind of get more acquainted with him. So that way he feels like he can divulge the information to us. Okay, so the king just wakes up with tomatoes all over the bed and pigeons cooking up, uh, cooing outside the window. Hilarious! <laughs> uh, I may have to chat with this wise hunter Bartholomew for a while before he's comfortable talking about his problems. At least the joke got things off to a good start. Okay, so let's socialize with him a little bit more. So friendly. Uh, ask about his health. See how he's doing. Do you feel fit enough? To defeat this boar, my good sir. A knight. Oh yeah, no, I don't want to threaten him for money. Uh, do an impersonation. <laughs> uh, gossip. So let's see here. Uh, ask about a religion. So there's actually like two different uh, religions in this game. Uh, technically, uh, the Watcher, they worship the Watcher, which is us, the player. There's a really funny cutscene in the beginning that kind of explains it. Uh, Eddard learned that Bartholomew is agnostic. Um, but eventually we'll be able to uh, introduce like two different kinds of approach to the religion, Jacobin and Peterin. Oh, they're doing manly stuff. They're wrestling. Um, so, get to know. Uh, but Jacobin is kind of more the, like, the doom and gloom. Like, Hellstone and Brimfire. Or, did I say that right? Brimfire and Hellstone? I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, and then... The Peterin is the kind of more lax. So I figure for Peterin, I'll put the High Sparrow in that position. And then uh, for the Jacobin, maybe like the Red Woman, Melisandre. There, uh, there is also a Wizard position, but I don't know if I will actually fill it. Because um, Melisandre would also be a good uh, fit for that. But as we complete quests, I'll be able to kind of get resource points to build more buildings, and then that way we can introduce more characters into this, uh, let's play. What's bothering you? The truth is, we haven't spotted the wild boar once in this whole forest. Plenty of boars, but, uh, bears, but no boars. We all came here to collect the massive bounty, but we must be searching in the wrong place. Interesting. Okay. So, the other guy we need to bribe with a drink. Uh, so it's going to cost me some money to brew something because uh, there's nothing left. So let's do ale. Um, and you can, if you collect these items, you can make all the other stuff. But I don't have anything, so we'll just do like the regular old stuff. All right, so let's see here. Uh, serve drink to bounty hunter Flint. We're gambling right now. <laughs> mm, a frothy forest beverage. This should do the trick. Oh God! <laughs> oh no! Gross. What's the secret? You're not welcome in this camp. Now get lost. Ugh. 
All right, how should Sir Eddard proceed next with the boar hunt? These hunters must have missed a clue in the forest. I should search for the boar there, or I should search the tent for clues about the boars and or treasure. Um, let's search the tent first and see if we can find anything that they're not telling us. Any luck so far? Oh, I lost 20, 20 simoleons. What the hell? Look, it cost me money. Let's go ahead and speed it up. I also missed this in Sims 4 where you can do fast ultra speed through the current action. It's amazing. Uh, rummaging through the hunter's belongings, Sir Eddard uh, discovered some animal pelts, some filthy clothes, stone knives, and spoiled food. Just before abandoning hope, Sir Eddard spotted a book with the, an embossed drawing of a boar on the cover. Deceived the truth about boars. Wonder if those hunters have any more loot in their tent. So read about... Oh, can I actually rummage for more loot? Heck yeah. Let's see if I get anything else. Ooh, I got some money and some XP from it. Found a small stack of gold coins while searching around in the tent. Sir Eddard received 250 simoleons. I'm just going to call them simoleons even though they're not. They're like simoles or something. Uh, it's just easier for me to say it that way. Uh, all right, so let's read this book and see if we can glean any information as to what's going on and what not. Oh, and I'm hungry, so I need to be going back and eating sometime soon. Um, so flipping intently. Let's see here. Let's pause really quick because my practice military strategy is about to run out as well. Uh, flipping intently through the worn pages of the tome, Sir Eddard came across an interesting passage with a picture of a boar sniffing some kind of lumpy rock on the ground. According to the text, most wild boars were particularly fond of truffles that grew around the damp caves. They sometimes became so immersed while eating truffles that they were, in fact, quite vulnerable to hunters. Convenient! Perhaps the wild boar could not be found in the forest because it was living in a nearby cave. Ah ha ha ha! Okay, um, so let's, uh, go on home and let me see. So I'm hungry, so let's make food and I don't have any other materials. So it's like I have to be gruel, um, which she's not going to be super happy about because it's not going to be delicious, but it's, it is what it is. Um, now as far as practicing with someone yeah see no one's available to practice with and i can't train anyone either oh i can it said train someone oh well i guess everybody's going to bed so it's going to be unfortunate he's going to be in a bad mood because he's not going to be able to um complete it uh but it is bedtime he is super sleepy so it is quite late so let's uh go to bed Sir Eddard has shirked his responsibility. At 9 a.m., a new opportunity to gain focus will be made available. Yeah. So as his focus goes up and down, uh, it'll just... It kind of dictates how well or how successful you might be. So I feel like it's probably a really good idea that um, I get my focus up a little bit more. Uh, because it also does dictate how fast... Uh, my scoring goes up and other things like that and yeah he's gonna be ultra upset because his other duty is about to yeah so we failed at both of them but there was really nothing I could do so uh, maybe I should have gone to like the training ground oh yeah see my rate is going down because my focus is down dang it so in the morning, hopefully, I'll be able to kind of get his focus up by pampering him a little bit. Um, all right. So a restless sleep quickly developed into a parade of monstrosities. Horrific visions all slavering, slavering over the prone and helpless Sir Eddard. 
No matter which way he turned, the horrors pressed even closer. So you can either confront the horrors or run. Uh, saw little no, uh, little choice but to challenge the wicked phantasm, phantasms head on, or terror-filled Sir Ned's heart. His only chance to survive was to run, run far away. Uh, yeah, we're going to confront the horrors. Swallowing his fears, Sir Eddard bravely stood before the encroaching apparitions and yelled in defiance. As dark claws slashed out at him, Eddard managed to dance away and countered with renewed vigor and hope. Suddenly, the nightmares began to melt back into the shadows, awed by the display of courage, till nothing stood before the vicious dreamer. Deep down, Eddard knew that the, he uh, really still... He was really still lying asleep somewhere, but no matter. Within the context of the dream, the victory was very real. So got 50 XP from that and a, a positive buff, which uh, has gotten our focus back up. So let's go ahead and relieve ourselves. <laughs> yeah, there are no toilets in this game. It is a Sims medieval baby. <laughs> so it's all about chamber pots. Um... So, uh, let's, uh, pop into the castle as well and use the bath to take a bath because that will also give him a positive buff. So that way, uh, hopefully, you know, we'll be fine. A uh, threatened merchant, a shady Tredonian merchant has slipped into Westeros and is trying to buy up some of our valuable supplies. I need to make sure he gets the message to leave and never come back. Okay, so that's who this is going to be, this, uh, like, orange medallion. There they are. All right, so let's, uh, knight. Um, threaten. Oh, worse relationship. So I actually have to, like... Like, <laughs> insult her first before I can do anything else. Alright, so mean. Call a lack witted cur. You lack witted cur, you. <laughs> uh, argue? Let's argue with him. Or her. <laughs> Ooh, I think now we're enemies. Okay, now I can threaten her. Like, leave now or lose your head. Okay. So, yay! We got one of our things done. Ooh, my hunger is starting to go up, too. Um, or go down, so I'm going to have to eat soon. Uh, guard forest entrance. So, need to go back to the forest and guard the entrance to uh, complete our other... Oh, wait, God. Where am I? Okay, oh, yeah, that's to the town. So the forest is over here. Over over here, yeah. I know where I'm at. <laughs> so let's guard the forest entrance really quick, and then after that, we'll eat. Um, and what else do we need to do? So sir, should Sir Eddard search for the cave alone or ask for help? I must seek out the truffles on my own. Someone in the castle will surely know where to look. Uh, we'll have him search on his own. Now, where should I start looking, he says. Because I feel like uh, he's kind of like, I don't know. He wants to do everything himself. Like, he feels that the, you know, any sort of duty, honor, all of that jazz befalls to him. So, uh, actually, I should be able to make food out here because, yeah, there's like a roast pit thingy. It's a roast rat. Ew, gross. <laughs> That's all I can do, though. A guy has got to eat. Uh, get a drink, maybe. That'll help. Kind of enjoy some, himself some. He's buzzed a little. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at the boar's cave. So find the cave. It's uh, around here somewhere. Aha, there it is. Okay. By the um, stones, headstones and everything. Uh, so go here. 
uh, all these like little bushes and like little rock stuff you'll actually be able to harvest and you need materials from these if you're like the blacksmith or um, a healer or anything like that even um, the spy so Arya will do some gathering with Arya uh, so that way she can um, make poisons and stuff like that like it's gonna be like really fun to play Arya like I imagine I'll be playing her a lot um, as far as the other characters, I'm thinking that, like, Sam will be the healer, uh, because he's the only person that I can really think of, like, main character that, you know, because he was, uh, trying to become a maester, so it makes sense. Uh, aha, mushrooms! I must be at the right place. I can smell something coming from the cave, okay? So defeat the boar. Now that I know where the boar lives, it's only a matter of besting it in a fight. I'll only give that bounty if I bring a trophy back to the monarch. Alright, so enter boar cave. Good luck, Sir Ned. Ned Stark. We'll see if, uh, if he's successful or not. So, my focus is up, like, massively, so I think he'll be fine. Tracking through the damp cave, the sounds of grunts and snuffles caught Sir Eddard's attention. Through the darkness ahead, he could make out the unmistakable orange fur of the mighty boar everyone had been hunting. The creature seemed unaware of his presence, gleefully gobbling up a large patch of truffles. Was this the time for Sir Eddard to strike? Attack? The boar was distracted eating truffles. Now was the time to attack or flee. Perhaps this was a good time to escape from the monstrous feast while escaping while escape seem, uh, still seemed possible. Now we're going to go ahead and attack because we're here to take care of him. So, ooh, wow, look at all the stuff. After a fierce struggle with the massive boar, Sir Eddard managed to plunge a sword through its belly, vanquishing the beast once and for all. He lopped off his head and took a, a glory, uh, the gory prize as a souvenir. So he got 40 XP and the head... They also leveled up. Congratulations, Eddard has reached night level two. Review your Simsomology tab for new profession benefits. Knights are war machines incarnate, proficient in all forms of deadly combat, yet tempered by a strict code of honor and conduct. They are responsible for the security of the kingdom and training of its soldiers. So now I can do restful dance combat tone unlocked. So um, it's something that I'll be able to use if I have to fight someone. Uh, fighting proficiency slightly increased, so I'll be more likely to win if I fight someone. And I can strategize at the tactical map. Interesting. All right. Should return to Lord Joffrey with the boar's severed head. A gory prize. Uh, I should, but I'm so close to going up to gold. <laughs> So I might give it to him tomorrow, and what I'll do is I'll just kind of relax and whatnot, um, or do some tac uh, you know, practice military strategy, because that will actually um, help level up quite a bit, uh, getting a bunch of XP. So oh, there's our page. See, where were you at, dude? Like, I needed you to be around. Or, uh, oh, he's a squire. Yeah, so that way I could have trained him and stuff. <laughs> um, but it's quite late. So, um, actually, I guess maybe we'll talk to him a bit. Ask him how he's doing. Because then that way maybe I'll be more likely to be, uh, call him over if I need to train anybody. Trait. Oh, complain about work. <laughs> chat. Let's chat him up some. Uh, get to know him. Ask musical preference. Oh, it looks like he's morose as well. Like, oh yes, let's talk about morose things. And brood. <laughs> like, I, it would be nice to have Jon Snow in this series, but I don't know if, um any sort of positions really uh, would match. So, let's 
So, because I think I've got pretty much everybody settled on where they're going to go. Um, so I'm kind of interested to see, like, who you guys think. Um, I'll, I'll list in the comments down below, like, what the professions are. And I'll be curious to see what you guys think as to who should go where as far as, like, main characters are concerned. And it'll, it'll be kind of interesting to see if, um, if we kind of have, like, the same ideas or if maybe you guys will have a better idea than I do and I might I might uh, implement it and give you guys a shout out or something but um, Eddard learned that Cameron is chivalrous well, that's good okay so oh sweet um, oops I didn't mean to pop out of the keep uh, so let's go ahead and sleep and then we'll give it, um, you know, I'll eat in the morning and then I'll give him the boar's head. Then that way I can wrap up the quest with a gold rating. Uh, Platinum's uh, still a bit ways off. Uh, it's a bit easier to get up to Platinum and other quest lines because they're a bit longer or more involved. Um, especially uh, with other professions, if you have to have like more uh, involved and longer like daily tasks and stuff. So, uh, so let's make food, and then and then make bed afterwards. Cause I feel like he would be tidy. <laughs> All right, and let's see here. Oh, wow, it's only 3 a.m. That's insane. All right, so let's uh, use that. And I highly doubt that anyone is this clean in Game of Thrones, but I'll have him take a bath as well, so that way I can get the positive uh, focus, because his focus is not super great right now. Um, actually, yeah, my rating is starting to go down. Which is not good. Okay, excellent. Uh, so let's go ahead and... I've slain the wild boar for you, your majesty. Oh, and see, look, this picture looks like Robert Baratheon, so... Oh, and this is, like, another hint, too, to where I have the lion portrait here. That, uh, all is not what it seems with Joffrey... You know, in that he's not a Baratheon. He's actually just a Lannister through and through. Uh, which is the whole carfluffle in season one of the show. Uh, and there I was, standing before the lair of the wild beast. Watching it gorge itself on truffles. I knew it was time to strike. We spotted each other simultaneously and charged fearlessly at one another. With one swift plunge, I drove a sharpened spear into the heart of the monster, vanquishing it at one, uh, <laughs> vanquishing it once and for all. You've done it. My kingdom no longer cowers before the presence of this savage creature. Here's your well-deserved reward. That a thousand simoles, which goes into the, a pool of money, I think. Um, oh, it doesn't actually. Yeah, as I complete my tasks and stuff like that, that's how I get paid. So, yay! I leveled to level 3. Um, and Sir Eddard has slain the wild boar known as Baba Scop... Sco... Sco... Pop Pop? <laughs> and collected an impressive bounty. A feast was held in celebration of his deed. Excellent! Um, so now I have 30 resource points, so I should be able to place something down, uh, cause the buildings lend to, um, kind of like the overall, are all like stats of the kingdom. So well-being or the hearts, security, uh, culture, uh, let's see here. What else could I place down? Uh, water or the mill? Which will increase the well-being quite a bit, as well as, uh, what is this, knowledge? Um, a fountain, the water pavilion, well-being, culture, and knowledge. Um, 
Yeah, let's do the King Ball Court. Because I kind of want to stay away from well-being. Just because I want to run the kingdom somewhat poorly. So that way that quest will pop to where we can uh, kill Joffrey. <laughs> Uh, pastime for some, a way of life for others. The King Ball Court stands as the single greatest achievement in the area of ball locomotive entertainment. So prepare your paddle, your body, and your mind before you you dare to step foot on its hollowed stones. So hopefully soon I'll be able to start placing some other buildings, um, like the clinic, um, well maybe not the wizard's tower. Uh, I might not even place the clinic because that's four points for well-being. That's uh, quite a lot. So, uh, Peterin and then Jacobin, this is where these will go. Um, we can also do like a merchant eventually and a bard. Like, uh, we'll be able to place a tavern, which I feel like the tavern would be good. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe doing Littlefinger. For maybe the either the market or the tavern like I, I'm not really sure like because I know that there is like a bard in the books but again I'm doing this based off of the show um, so it, it's just kind of interesting trying to figure out like who would fit in these you know in these jobs um, there's a smithy so uh, a blacksmith. Gendry is actually a blacksmith, so I might actually be putting him in here, which is kind of interesting because he actually is Robert Rathian's legitimate son. Um, or illegitimate son. <laughs> but he is legitimately related to Robert Rathian, whereas Joffrey is not. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, so next quest, maybe we'll... Uh, pop in and place Arya and have her do it. So I, I anticipate that it'll be a lot of fun <laughs> having her run around and get into some, some shenanigans and whatnot. Uh, let me know what you thought about the com um, you know, about the series so far uh, in the comments down below. Also, let me know who you think I should place in these roles. And um, again, I'll list the roles down below. And I'm excited. Uh, so we have um, how many more quest points we have 47 more quest points so it's it's gonna be um you know interesting to see if we can get that quest to pop up and if we can kill him so because it all depends on how we run the kingdom and how much uh you know well-being security all these other things are um that dictates what quests become available to you so um yeah i don't know i think it'll be fun so <laughs> thanks for hanging out. And if you want to be, uh, if you want to see more content, be sure to hit that like button and perhaps check out my channel memberships and the perks you get by hitting the join button down below, like the behind the scenes uh, episodes before anybody else gets to see it. And until next time, take care and I'll see you in the next episode.